Hey friends, we have good news. Tori version two is out. We have on the channel been streaming a whole bunch of Tori version two content, but it is officially version two stable. Now, if you haven't heard of Tori before, Tori is a framework to create small, fast, secure, and cross-platform applications. If you have web dev or web tech experience, uh, Tori might be a platform that is interesting to you. Any content that you can generate, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, WASM that you would deploy to the web, it's something you could also put in a web view within Tori. And there was a keyword there, web view. This is different from some other platforms that bundle a like Chrome embedded along with your application. So it does reduce the bundle size. The trade-off though is that you're relying on the system web view. So we, so we got the core ecosystem, Tau, Rai, and then the, what we qualify as Tori core, what are, what is in the, the, the main Tori repo. And those are sort of all those DX elements and utils and macros that help glue everything together and improve the overall experience. We do our best to make sure that the experience using Tori is not intimidating, just purely based on the fact that it's an application. The way that you handle and build applications for the web should hopefully feel in some ways familiar here. We're taking your code, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, WASM, pack in, packaging it up into a binary, and that's the thing that's rendered in the web view. In some ways, you can kind of think of that as your front end. And in the back end, we have Rust. There's a layer there that isn't unsimilar to front end, back end web servers. But there are some differences, and there are some things to keep in mind there. And we also have more direct access to operating system type functionality. So if, if you're interested in doing applications, the benefit of doing this over delivering something directly for the web is that you have that more direct op access to operating system functionality. Tau and Rai make up the bedrock of the ecosystem and Tori with a handful of crates and plugins on top of it, improve the development experience and allow you to maintain and ship updates and give you all those nice DX goodies along with it. So all of these three pieces together is what allows you to develop a Tori app. Now, one of the lovely things about version two is some of that core functionality that was directly in V1 has now pulled, been pulled out as plugins. And there's now a plugin ecosystem. And what is particularly interesting about plugins and just in, in general plugin ecosystems is that it allows those pieces of a code to run at a different pace than say the core. The core will have a different development cadence and it will have different auditing requirements. You might have a plugin or you might want to experiment with something, but the lift to get that into the core repo could be very high. But as a plugin, that, that effort is greatly reduced, especially since you can publish your plugins separately. They now are able to run at a separate cadence from something like the core. Not only does this mean that they can be developed in more easily in parallel level of experimentation and what you where you're taking the plugin doesn't need to be directly in tandem with the rest of the core library so you can you can you can get real weird you can get real weird with plugins and just drop them in in whatever app uh, is, needs that specific feature if you're interested in any of that kind of content feel free to check out some of the past streams and future streams we do a lot of that kind of experimentation. <laughs> PRs and forks and patches to try try some interesting things out. So what one of the big features in version two is mobile support. That's that's likely gonna be a thing that piques a lot of interest. It allows you to build an app that you could deploy in desktop, uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, but also mobile, Android, iOS. That's pretty powerful. But naturally that brings questions along. How do we support that? And does that mean that my code is gonna be a mess of all of these 
different logic gates to build or or do specific things for a platform versus another? It's certainly a valid question. The setup in Tori and the specifically the backend with Tori is written in Rust. Rust has a very powerful configuration macro system so as to allow one to write code in different code paths based off of different targets. This improves the ability to handle all of these different scopes and these different code paths in a way which doesn't get entirely convoluted. But it is certainly something to think about. What ends up being very nice about this is that not only is the core using Rust and written in a way which takes advantage of this, you can also write plugins and you can also do this yourself. You can do a lot of work in the JavaScript side of things. And what is lovely about that is Rust becomes an interface that you can slowly become comfortable with. Start out using as much JavaScript, as much of the, the web view as, as you can. And as you need, you can start to dabble. And, and even, even for me, this has been a way to sort of like get myself introduced and comfortable with Rust. The more and more comfortable you are with Rust, the more you can start to take advantage of that interop between these two interfaces and do your development in a way where you're taking advantage of the benefits and the pros of one versus the other. And I think this becomes especially interesting when we start to discuss mobile support. So what happens if you have a specific use case where you actually need to drop down into and use specific operating system code or code that doesn't necessarily fit best within your web viewer within Rust. So that's that's an interesting bit with our mobile support is that it's actually relying on the system native language, Swift and Kotlin for the mobile platforms. And we can do the same when we're working with operating systems as well. With Rust and the ecosystem and the cargo crates, we're able to pull any code that's been published there that's built for these specific platforms or these specific operating system architectures and plug them in. With the config macros, we can say, have different code paths for all these very specific situations. We do a build, specify the target, and all that other code that isn't for that platform, for that architecture, it gets eliminated. I think probably one of the last interesting bits about version two is the changes in the IPC layer, the inter-process communication layer. That is the where the communication happens between the front end, aka your web view, and the Rust side of things. If you were sending large blobs of data, that serialization between those two layers bogged down some very specific cases in version one. That has been tweaked and the way that's handled is different. And there's also handles to allow you to do more custom handling of that specific data which I think starts to become very interesting if you're sending large, large amounts of data, such as like video or pictures over that, over that layer. It gets very interesting too, because you can write your own custom streaming implementations for these. And as always, with Tori version two, we went through a security audit phase. The core of Tori that includes Tao and Rai went through a security audit. We made a bunch of fixes especially with the, the big architecture changes that happened due to setting up and building in mobile support. And we're very appreciative of the funding from NILNet to support this audit phase. A disclaimer though, I am involved with the project since nearly the beginning. I am currently on the Tory board and part of the working group. So take, take this with a grain of salt, but I do think it's a great project. Uh, if you're interested in making an app, check out the links below. Feel free to stop by the stream, press all the buttons, and we stream pretty much every week going through different plugins and pieces of Tori. And then any, any anything that's sort of like tech adjacent 